Hello, hello, and welcome to another edition of Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show, a talk show, in which we talk about anything that has to do with the Beatles. And actually, this is a very special broadcast because we're just responding, all four co-hosts here, to some very sad news, uh, which just broke as we're doing this show about an hour or so ago. Ken Michaels here. I'm being joined by Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hi, everyone. And Al Sussman from Beetle Fan. Hi, Al. Hi, Ken. Hello there, everybody. And also our freelance writer who also writes for Beetle Fan, that being Alan Cozen. Hi, Alan. Hi, Ken, and hello, everyone. And we're doing a special show right now in response to the very sad news that Cynthia Lennon has passed away. Uh, this has come as a total shock to, I guess, most of us. Although, Al, I remember when we just did our review of the Fest for Beetle Fans, mm-hmm. you had already heard that, that Cynthia was ill. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what did you hear uh, prior to this news? Uh, of today? Just that in in recent months, in fact, uh, I believe Julian had may had remarked from time to time that apparently, you know, after all, especially since she became a widow, uh, I think roughly two years ago, that uh, that that Cynthia has been in in fragile health, and that apparently uh, apparently she did have some form of cancer. In fact, uh, Brad Hunt, who is one of Beatle fans' longtime uh, contributors, just pointed out on Facebook that of as what he calls the first wives club, the first four wives of of the Beatles since Jane Asher and Paul McCartney never actually married, that of those for, uh, first four wives, the only one still with us in this life now is uh, Patty Harrison. Wow. Right. And actually, Julian Lennon uh, posted a really yes. nice video in memory of Cynthia, um, and it's for his song called Beautiful, which is really a gorgeous song. Mm-hmm. And those of you who don't know it, it's on his most recent album called Everything Changes. But it was also first released on a, a CD single that he released a few years ago called Lucy, which was a right. tribute to the girl for which Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, the classmate of, of Julian's, he did a song as a tribute to her. So right. it was a song that was first on that CD EP, and yeah. uh, later on everything changes. But a gorgeous song, and uh, really just uh, you know, a very well done video that was done for Cynthia. And that video does kind of indicate that obviously this was not, at least for Julian, this was not you know out of the blue. That uh, that apparently I guess um, Cynthia had been had been ill for a while. And so he at least had the time to prepare this video for, you know, for this particular sad moment. Right. So I thought we'd talk about, uh, you know, some of the history of Cynthia Lennon, obviously such a big, big, big part in the history of the Beatles. Uh, Who would like to start? How about you, Alan? Well, you know, it's I've always sort of felt uh, sort of badly for Cynthia. I mean, you you know, or, or. she was in there at the very beginning. Um, she put up in a, in a way with a lot of abuse from John during his sort of unreconstructed rocker days. And uh, mm. um, she sort of lived through that. And then, you know, through the, the fame where, you know, she had to be hidden and, uh, you know, girl fans were being kind of mean to her because she was sort of in their way from their point of view. And, uh, you know, you, she, 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 uh, I think was like any of them was sort of unprepared for the unreality of fandom, you know, the, this, the level of fandom where people have some fantasy reality that they can be, you know, with the people they're fans of in, in a romantic way or whatever. And, uh, you know, and, 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 and when John was on tour by himself in a certain way, they could, um, and she dealt with that too. I mean, she sort of knew what was going on and, uh, sort of turned a blind eye and, uh, you know, and then I, I think, you know, a lot of people who sort of knew them at the time as the Beatles were developing have said that, you know, they really weren't at that point that closely matched and that Yoko really was a lot more like what John was was looking for at that point in in his life. And Cynthia had become fundamentally a housewife, you know, and, and, and also a prisoner of 
of of their home. Um, so you know that was it, it's kind of a pity, but it's sort of the way it was. I, I interviewed her once. I, I found her a, a very charming, nice lady, um, and when we talked about, you know, we didn't talk a lot about John and Yoko and the Beatles. It, it, it came up in a way because it, it was a co-interview with May, May Pang. Uh, mm-hmm. May was uh, promoting a book um, or having an an art show as well, I think. And Cynthia, Cynthia and May had become very friendly. And so Cynthia came over in a way for sort of moral support and to go to May's show and, and, so the two of them were in the interview together. And the one thing that Cynthia said to me about John is that what she thought broke up their marriage wasn't so much Yoko as LSD. She said that John was and, – and she kind of she kind of says this in um, at least her second book, John, as well. Uh, she said that you know once John started doing that, he was a completely different person. And from her point of view, that was sort of where the marriage began to fray. So that's pretty, pretty much what I – can add. I mean, I, I'm sort of shocked by this. I mean, I didn't know her particularly well, and you know, but she was, as as you say, a, a big part of the early part of the story. And it's, uh, I had no idea really that that she was that ill. I'd heard, you know, rumors that she was ill, but uh, uh, so I'm, I'm I'm still a little bit surprised by this. As you probably can hear. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think we all. I think we all are. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Alan mentioned Cynthia and May in connection with, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, when May's book, Instamatic Karma, That's was right. released because mm-hmm. I met uh, Cynthia at the uh, book launch that, um, uh, that May had down in, in Greenwich Village. Uh, and, and she seemed, in all the hubbub of that night with all of May's record business uh, associates and friends and all uh cynthia seemed almost lost in all of that she seemed to you know a very vulnerable figure and it was like she was almost uh trying to hold on to other people just to make conversation so um in, in a way and, and and she always seemed that way even uh on that first tour in in 1964 in february of 64 which was really the only time when any of the wives uh, accompanied uh the beatles on any of their you know their tours uh right. she came to america with john and and even then she seemed kind of almost you know lost inside you know the eye of the hurricane as as john later called it you know kind of almost like a waif and um so she's kind of a very vulnerable but very sympathetic figure as well and uh but Alan makes a good point that uh, that she you know she really uh was more of the you know, i guess probably the typical Liverpool wife that men in Liverpool were kind of supposed to have you know somebody who would just simply be you know just be, be a housewife basically and uh and in that way she wasn't as as challenging for john as you know as a yoko would be you know at a later time or or even as some of um his rumored uh other you know conquests of the time joan baez eleanor braun etc um supposedly were you know that they were more mm. kind of intellectually challenging to him than than Cynthia may have been. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that she that she adapted to the rock and roll lifestyle. I think she liked no. hanging around with the other Beatle wives. She was very yes. close with Pat and with mm-hmm. Maureen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh yeah, she was more the typical the servant to the man. Uh yeah. you know, in this case. And that's not what what John needed to stimulate him. You know, he was very much, you know, I always remember what Paul said, the same thing about uh, Linda, that he he didn't want to be with a woman that was thick, you know, someone who actually had intelligence and wasn't just, you know, a dutiful housewife, Mm -hmm. you know. So um, 
same thing that there's similarities there between Yoko and Linda in that regard. But yeah, I, I had the chance to meet Cynthia one time, and that was when I was at a convention, one of Charles Rosene's conventions, and she was one of the guests there. I did a panel with her, and she was very charming. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just uh, very polite. I, I, I almost kind of, I always really felt sorry for the life that she led in, at the time. Because she wasn't treated very well, but then at the same time, what do you expect when you're married to a man who has the whole, all these women at his feet? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, all around the world. What do you? How do you expect John to behave? You know, a, a young man with with all this temptation. But uh, yeah, it's it's um, and then of course you have to bring up the fact of of you know Julian being such a you know a big part in in the Beatles story and and. Uh, I'm very proud of the man that he's become and the artist that he's mm-hmm. become. And you got to give Cynthia a lot of credit for that because the two right. of them were as close as could be. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, that's the one, the one person that Julian could always rely, rely on was Cynthia. Right. Yes. Yeah. I met, I met Cynthia too, uh, at, uh, Beetle Fest in Los Angeles. In fact, it was my first Beetle Fest and it was actually the reason I went because my friends had said that she was going to be the guest, and I said, "That's it. We're going. I'm going." Mm-hmm. Because uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I had a crush on her in the '60s. I really did. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was so cool to go down there and meet her. And I think I even told her that, and she looked at me kind of quizzically. This was before I. This was well before I started writing, but. Uh, but yeah, it was. This was. She was there to promote Twist to Lennon. This was before the John. I think before the John book came out. I think. But um, yeah, she. Um, yeah, and I. And one thing I remember about that appearance was when she talked in, and when she, you know, everybody assembled in the um, in the auditorium there, and she talked about Yoko, the incredible amount of booze that Yoko's name got when she mentioned yeah. her. It was. It was pretty sad, actually, that that was the you know that that happened. But yeah, she was. Um, but she was very nice. She was extremely nice. In fact, I think we bumped into her, my friend and I later. Um, and and she was by you know she was with somebody, but they were not you know they were away from the crowds. And she was you know she was she was a little shy, but you know I th- but yeah she was she was nice she was nice. But yeah, this was really I'd heard a little I'd heard. I think somebody had told me, and I don't, I don't want to guess who, but I'd heard somewhere that she was, she had been ill. So this mm-hmm. isn't a total, total surprise, but it is, it, it did kind of blindside, I think, everybody because they weren't really expecting to hear it, and especially the fact that it happened today. There was, and with the, with the hoax uh, website apparently that yesterday claimed that she was still alive and that. You know, and had people wondering whether this was a joke and and everything. And uh, you know, it's not obviously, but yeah, this is really sad. Our sincerest condolences to Julian. Um, yes. yes, this is just it really, really sad. Really sad. You know, Steve, you brought up one point there, and that is that you know, back in the '60s, a lot of girls modeled themselves after certain uh, figures, that's, and that's, certainly the girls' wives. You know, there mm-hmm. are some women that wanted to look like Cynthia. Some wanted to look like Patty. I don't know if there were any Maureen fans, <laughs> but uh, yeah, certainly Jane Asher of, fans. Definitely. Yeah, there were a lot of there were a lot of Jane Asher fans, both male and female. I'll tell you, very that. much so. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For another reason, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, and I always remember it was a very telling moment when Cynthia didn't catch the train. In Wales, yes. that was, it just seemed yeah. to be, you know, a moment in time when it was like, John has a life of his own now that has really little to do with her. And, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's a very revealing moment. You know, I'm, there were other moments before that which were similar, but that one in particular always strikes me as being a, a big moment in time when things were about to change. And it wasn't it was... too long after that. Yeah, I think you know, it was that, in the, that John in, was with Yoko. Yeah, I think it was in the Complete Beatles. Possibly, Cynthia even talked about that, or one, uh, a film from around that time in the eighties. She talked about that particular moment and standing there on that uh, on that on that platform, watching the train pull away, and she felt that you know right there 
that perhaps the marriage was doomed, at least if not over, certainly doomed to failure. That he was that he was moving on to other other things, and so even though Cynthia went to um, went to India with John the following spring, apparently the the marriage was definitely in 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 its uh, you know failing months. Let's put it that way. Right. You know, we talked about how she was the traditional housewife and that that mm-hmm. wasn't what John needs. But there is a certain amount of irony in there in that um, uh, you know, to a certain extent, she was put in that role by John. I mean, they met in art school and she was, you know, if you flip through Twist of Lenin, you could see that she was a fairly talented uh line artist i mean her her portraits look like the people they're supposed to be and there's a certain amount of character to them and and who knows i mean you know she was supposed to have been um one of the better students there maybe she could have pursued an art career but i don't think that that's what john thought he wanted at the time you know so uh i mean who knows if she had been able to pursue her own artistic interests rather than sublimating everything to being a housewife, maybe that part of their history would have been a bit different too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's um, an excellent Ring- point, Alan. Very much so. Ringo um, just tweeted a, a reaction or, or a comment um, uh, about uh, Cynthia's passing. It said, peace and love to Julian Lennon. God bless Cynthia. Love Ringo and Barbara XX. They're, very nice. There I'm sure go. there'll be a quote. There'll be a quote from Paul very soon. There's still there's still a closeness within the Beatles families, and they'll always be there, whether they're mm-hmm. physically close, you know, or not. They do occasionally meet each other, so there's always going to be, you know, it's part of who they are. It's it's part sure. of their whole history. They they yeah. have to connect. There is that that strong connection all the time. So they all feel for this. So uh, we just thought that we would put together this little tribute here to Cynthia. And uh, our condolences to Julian. And um, and that's it. So for this edition of Things We Said Today, I'm Ken Michaels being joined by Steve Marinucci, Al Sussman, and Alan Cozen saying thanks for listening, and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>